I'm looking forward to the soundtrack. So let's talk about it, man. Let's let's talk about it, man. So a little rundown of um the top five movies to look towards, man. It's your boy HH. I know that I'm not posted for well, it is what it is. So it's 2023. And what are my top five films that I'm looking f- um forward to watch to swatch? So, you know, this is I told you, I'm, I'm the movie merch, I'm gonna be giving you that extra so we're just gonna just talk about it and just really just give a well rather than I'm gonna give my five six cents as to which of these films um, could pop off, could say a little something, and just, you know, ones for you to look out for. So look, without further ado, let's, let's, let's get this popping, man. So first up, so this is number five. Fifth one I'm looking forward to. This is a tricky one. Let's, 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 let's talk real about this one. I've read the book, Amazing Book. The film is visually amazing. You know, the film is visually amazing. Vilnov didn't deliver on that on that film. He didn't deliver on that film, and it is it is probably one of my. I mean, I've had many disappointments. I mean, throw Dark Knights, throw Mad Max Fury Road, throw Man of Steel. There are many, many disappointments. This was another disappointment based on just the hype that was there. Denis Villeneuve and so forth. I just felt that he didn't really do the book justice in sense of what the story was, and it was just messed up. I mean, just the way that it's ended. If you've read the books, the books are in three parts. But Homeboy mixed parts one and part two. Bro, use the effing book, bro. Like the, the, <laughs> Frank Herbert is saying, mate, just end it when it has after part one. But this, it's one of the best soundtracks in recent memory. Hans Han Zimmer Ball. I mean, that's a tier one borderline chief or gas soundtrack. And I'm like, okay, this is there. Let's see what happens in D2. So my thing is, I saw Dune 2. The excitement for Dune 2 is it's still extremely well acted. It's There's actually going to be much more eventful stuff happening in the second part. But I'll keep it a stack away with, with you. I'm looking forward to the soundtrack. Because I know that Hans Zimmer will not take things to the next level when you're not having the massive battles with the... Um, with, um, the um, Atreides, House of Atreides against the Harkonnens and so forth. So I'm looking forward to the soundtrack. <laughs> so that's my... So Hans Zimmer giving that soundtrack. I don't really have a high hopes for it, but at the end of the day, see, even in the in the first part of the even if I felt that the film was disappointing and it could have been better, there were some incredible scenes and visually it's incredible. It's visually incredible. So you're still going to see some visually um, amazing, incredible things. And that's my issue with Villeneuve. I didn't like 2049. Blade Runner by Ridley Scott is one of my favorite films of all time. And I think one of the best films of all time. 2049, some amazing scenes into Blade Runner justice. So same thing with this whole thing. Some amazing scenes here and so forth, but the film as a whole just doesn't hold that proper narrative cohesive weight, man. But as I said again, I'm looking forward to the Hans Zimmer soundtrack and some specific scenes and sections um, in the film, man. So Dune is my number five. My number four. When I first watched Into the Spider-Verse, I wasn't a fan. I was like, well, this is amazing. I wasn't a fan. But after just accepting that it's a different Spider-Man film, it isn't Peter Parker, it's just something different, and I watched it again, I was like, on a visual level, it's insane. So if someone comes in and says, this is the greatest comic book movie ever made, I can't argue. In terms of really embodying what a comic book should feel like when you read from the visual artistic points of view into the spider verse is freaking insane because the amount of stars that they're just using and they're playing with and how just what it looks like and how it moves and feels it's freaking amazing on the visual levels it's amazing so accepting that this isn't peter parker's story and it's miles morales and it's just you doing something much more different on an artistic level I'm very interested, and I think right now, because it's across the Spider-Verse, and when you look at that trailer, the homeboy is fighting everybody. I mean, he's doing there everywhere, so 
And even when you look at the trailer, it's it's mad. <laughs> the trailer looks mad and freaking insane. I think there's one scene when you see one Spider-Man like pretty get him and put him down. So from an animation point of view, I want to see what these guys do. I want to see what they're going to achieve. And I want to see what they're going to put on the table on that visual, frenetic, visceral level. Because look, bro, it, 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 the first one popped off. The first one po popped off. So um, I just need to accept that this is a different Spider-Man story. Accept it for what it is. And I think that's where I'll have, I'll have a lot more fun. So, but these guys are pushing the boundaries for animation and from, as i said again i hate pixar pixar are, are losers they're freaking overrated there's only one pixar film i've liked and that's toy story and it wasn't even that good all disney is better so i like that we now have some and like an antithesis to that garbage that's pixar do that's use emotional manipulation against you and for this into the spider verse i'm like okay this pops off this looks looks pretty good it's interesting it's intriguing so um yeah man i'm i'm looking forward just to see you um what boundaries they break and what ground they break in terms of animation comic book styles and just um what they do on a whole visual level man because yeah i mean th th we need this we need an alternative to that bomb as pixar so, so that's one number four number three he had the biggest film of the year yes yeah don't give us it was the biggest film of the year um and you see, Tom Cruise is Tom Cruise is the last action hero. Tom Cruise is I'm sorry. Tom Cruise is the last movie star. He is the last true, genuine movie star. And you go to Mission Impossible to see Tom Cruise risk his life. <laughs> like basically, it's like we're back in the circus. You go to say, what is this guy going to do? I remember. I think it was. I think it was a rogue nation where this guy's climbing on top of a freaking plane. It's him on that damn plane, holding on to that plane. And I think in the last movie, he was climbing on a freaking helicopter and flying the damn helicopter. So Tom Cruise, this this man, he's he's mad. He's mad. But he is what it means to go and watch the movie. So when you buy a ticket to a Tom Cruise movie, you get what you paid for. You get what you paid for. Not this CGI trash MC nonsense. It's real proper movie magic this is actual movie magic that i grew up with and for this mission impossible the trailer looks, looks popping off and bro i think this guy has a, a bike rides off the bike off like a huge cliff and just goes like i'm like what what's the so, sorry tommy sees tommy sees different tommy sees different so i'm really looking forward to see just what the hell this guy does in mission impossible because let's be real these with regards to the story and the people Shout out to Vin Grimm's man. Vin Grimm's is my guy, man. Very underrated actor. But I know Rebecca Ferguson is also pretty good, good as well. But I think I'm not really watching it for the story. I'm watching it for the action and what Tom Cruise does. So it really is about the action, right? No one really cares about, oh, what's going to happen to Ethan Hunt and his, you know, like, no, no. It's about the action and it's about the ride and it's about the spectacle. And the spectacle, obviously, delivered by, what's his name? Is it um, McQuarrie? I forgot where his first name is. By a boy, um, McCory, I think it's Chris McCory, McCory, who wrote, um, he wrote Usual Suspects. He was the writer for Usual Suspects because he's the director for, for this last, I think the last two Mission Impossible have been directed by him. So McCory and Tom Cruise, they have that kind of back and forth. So we're just, I'm here in here for the, for the spectacle. I'm in here for that spectacle. So let's write him, man. Mission Impossible, Tom Cruise, Tommy C. So my number two. Maybe one that surprised people. Everyone knows Napoleon. I think Napoleon is literally Napoleon throwing Idi Amin, throwing a Hitler, throwing Genghis Khan, throwing um, Alexander the Great, throwing Gandhi, throwing all the church. He is one one of them, like Cleopatra. He is just he is a person from history. For good or for bad, he is a name that will always rem be remembered throughout human history just for his impact on history with regards to what he did being um, the leader of France, man. So, um, and his name has even entered into Paul culture. People say, oh, you have like a Napoleon um, complex and everything. So he is a huge name. I remember learning about him in school 
I think it's with Battle of Waterloo that he was in. And I remember watching a film with him. And I think, who was it? I think it was, was it Roy Steiger? The guy who was with uh, Marlon Brando in On the Waterfront. So I think he, he was Napoleon in one film. So he's a huge historical figure. So if you give me really Scott, you give me Joaquin Phoenix. So, and I'm now getting the vibes of Gladiator, where they last walked in Gladiator, and also Kingdom of, of Heaven, and the Bloom Ruined but still Kingdom of Heaven. I'm like, I'm sold. The only thing I'm worried about is the writer. The writer, um, I, look at, I looked at his credits. Uh, it's a bit tricky. You have to get a good writer. The, uh, the, the screenwriter is key. You can have the best director, the best actors. If, if the screenplay is a brick, the, the movie becomes a brick. But I'm sorry, man. Joaquin Phoenix, Ridley Scott, historical epic, and it's Napoleon. Whew! That is, I'm, I'm sold. I'm sold. So even if the script is a brick or so forth, and maybe the film is up or down, just to see what Joaquin Phoenix does with the role of Napoleon, oh my God! My God! And also, just some of the visual things that Ridley Scott can do, specifically if they now show him in those battle scenes and some of those epic scenes and epic moments of his life, I mean, <laughs> bro... Bro, th this film could pop off because I think they were actually trying to release it this year. Because I think it's Apple, but then Apple decided to release. I don't know. Did they last Will Smith? But they went with something else. But I think now they they say okay, this is the year to release it. But so the only issue is they're gonna try and go for awards. So if they're going for awards, we're probably not gonna see this till like November. So we will have a time to it. But still, man, guys, I repeat, Ridley Scott, Wacked Phoenix, Napoleon. That's money. <laughs> that is freaking cash money, man. So, what is my number one film that I'm looking forward to? The theme was put it up. My number one movie. One of the best trailers I've ever seen. The last time a trailer did that to me was the Matrix Reloaded tra trailer, where I changed, I changed race. I, I changed my life. I changed my gender. I changed everything. Because... The trailer was so good. When I, when I watched the trailer for the first time, it was so good, I pressed pause. I was like, okay, okay, pause, 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 pause. Because when he met Donnie Yen, and I, I've always said this, I don't want to trigger people, Donnie Yen over Bruce, Bruce Lee. For me, Donnie Yen is that dude. Donnie Yen is better than Bruce Lee. So Donnie Yen is my guy. Him and obviously Tony Jai, they're my guys. So when I just saw just that piece of Donnie Yen doing his thing, I was like, okay, let's, let's, let's hide. And I think, is it Horitori Yuki Sanada? Is it, I think it's Horiyuki Sanada. Um, yes, Hiroyuki Sanada's man from um, Last Samurai. He's in it as well. I mean, boom. It's, I mean, worried, man. Worried. And that trailer was money. That trailer was money. Here's the thing. John Wick 2 is one of my favorite films of all time. <laughs> it's one of my favorite films of all time. John Wick 1 was cool. John Wick 3 was also cool as well. But I just thought that the story wasn't really popping off as well. Because I thought they'd end it within the, the trilogy. But, I mean, guys, it's done yet. It's done yet. It's done yet. So, done yet, in this world, and you know what your boy Charles Stahelski can do? Again, a little bit of, tri of trivia. So, Charles Stahelski, he co-directed the first film, and he was the main director on John Wick 2, John Wick 3, and I think this. He was the stunt double for Keanu Reeves in all the Matrix films. So it's, it's real, it's real. And also, crazy thing, he almost got paralyzed in the subway scene in the first Matrix when Smith hits him and then he basically goes back and hits him. So luckily, thank goodness that he actually um, survived that. But yeah, he was, he can really stunt double in all the three Matrix films and they've been very, very close friends ever since. So and I think Stahelski said that, look, we enjoy making these films, so why stop at three? So he said that's, I'm going to keep making them as much as we enjoy them and the audiences enjoy them. And John Wick has entered the cultural lexicon. Like people say, oh man, I'm going to go John Wick on you, man. <laughs> I'm going to go John, John Wick on you. So John Wick is that, like he's that guy. He he is that. He's not, not, that, he's not that guy. He's that guy. So, bro, I'm in. Like, I'm in. I'm in. You, you, you throw in Lawrence Fish, but in them, there's a bigger cast. So, and the thing with these films is the action just keeps on getting bigger, greater, and much larger, man. But, you guys, I'll say it again. <laughs> I mean, shout out to Ken Reeves. Ken Reeves is doing his thing. Ken Reeves is doing his thing because you have to understand about Ken Reeves. Before the first Matrix, the guy didn't know how to do a kick or anything. After the Matrix film, shout out to the Wachowskis, he pretty much became like a semi 
martial arts expert and he's just said, screw it, I'll just become a martial artist. So shout out to Kenan Reeves. Bro, go. What Kenan Reeves achieved in that chateau scene in Matrix Reloaded is highly underrated for a guy who's not a natural martial artist. Donny Yen with the Chad Stahelski 7-Eleven team choreography. God, I'll play it again. Donny Yen directed by Chad Stahelski in the John Wick world. That's cash money. That's cash money. So, yeah, man. Um, John Wick 4, man, that is my most anticipated movie, man. So, guys, tell me, what about you guys, man? What movies are you looking forward to? Or what TV shows are you looking forward to, man? What are you looking forward to in big 2023, man? And I'll see you guys on the other one. Peace out. Stay true. One love, baby.